Martin Luther, the father of Protestant Reformation, had a good friend and a sister by the name of Frederick Myconius. In 1540, Myconius fell ill and was expected to die just any minute. On his deathbed, he wrote a tender farewell message to Luther, and when Luther read the message, he immediately sent a reply. I command you, Luther said, in the name of God to live, because I shall have need of you in the work of reforming the church. The Lord will never let me hear that you are dead, but will permit you to survive me. For this I am praying, this is my will, and my will be done, because I seek only to glorify the name of God or glorify the name of Luther. I'm not sure which one. <laughs> but, and, and those words seem bold and brash, right? I mean, that's kind of my will be done. But, while those words are like that, Myconius, when he got the message, had already uh, was unable to speak. He was so ill. So, uh, he did recover. He lived six years after that, and he died exactly two months after Martin Luther died. Now that, wouldn't you like to be able to pray like that? Just, you know, one of the best ways to learn how to pray is to, of course, read the Bible. The Bible's full of prayers. I'd never looked at it like that. And I got to looking, and they're everywhere. You know, the, these, these saints that we look on as our church fathers and all of this, they prayed constantly. Like I do when I'm fishing. Oh, please, Lord. <laughs> Let him get this one. Go ahead. But content is obvious, but the, the, the whole notion of uh, uh, intensity is something that we may not, you know, read your Bible. It, it's amazing. <laughs> but many of us get distracted when we attempt to pray. There's all sorts of noise going on around us. And, and truth be told, uh, we're, we're kind of playing around sometimes when we pray. We, we're not focused on it. Uh, and how different our prayers tend to be uh, from those of Moses and Daniel and David and Paul. And these men prayed uh, with fire in their souls. As the saying goes, they prayed like the Romans with their eyes on fire. Uh, there was a force. They shut the world out around him and they prayed to the Almighty God. And prayer is truly the window to the soul. What we pray for, we care for. We all pray for what concerns us. And the reverse is also true. We don't pray about what we don't care about. Uh, that's a pretty solemn and convicting thought, I think. Uh, though we may try to escape its force, we can't escape the truth. We're negligent on prayer. All of us. We're human. Uh, we could all say uh, all we want about how much something means to us. Oh, I just, I just love that girl. I just think she's so awesome. But if we don't bring her before God in prayer, she means nothing to us. Have we really, really cared about her? Or, or your car or your house or just whatever. If you don't care enough about it to take it to prayer, then you don't care about it. That's kind of black and white and ugly and evil. Sorry. But that's why here and there the Bible records the prayers of all the saints of God. By reading scripture we get to listen in as Moses <coughs> pleads with God or, or we listen as Nehemiah and Daniel intercede with the Almighty. In John 17 we observe the Lord Jesus talking intimately with His Heavenly Father. And scattered throughout the epistles are numerous short prayers by Paul himself. Uh, they're not forms that we need to slavishly adhere to, but they're guides to help us frame our thoughts as we come to the Lord in prayer. I'm especially grateful that one of Paul's prayers showed up as our epistle reading today, and I thought it was just a reading until I was thinking about this and the notion of prayer hit me, and it is a prayer. If there's any doubt to whether it's not a prayer, just listen to this. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father. Does that sound like a prayer? You sound like he's praying. He bows his knees and he prays, right? To the, unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that you would that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Now that's that's a prayer. And he ends it the way we end our prayers. He says, uh, 
Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. How can you not think that's a prayer? I've gone for 63 years without realizing there was prayers in the Bible. My goodness. <laughs> but this is the second prayer in Ephesians. The first prayer was back in chapter 1 that we had read about. But it's uh, The first prayer is about enlightenment. It, it prays that our eyes were, and our hearts are open to the love of God. If the first prayer is for enlightenment, the second one is for enablement. Uh, it's If the first prayer is knowledge, the second prayer is power. And to me, power is just strength when and where you need it. That, that's real power. So we look at this prayer from our gospel lesson, we see that Paul prays for one thing and one thing only. He asks God to strengthen the Ephesians by the Holy Spirit on the inside so that they can fulfill their promise and the God's will on the outside. And though this prayer has many parts and builds to a big climax, there's only one request. And he says, I ask therefore not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. The phrase not to be dis uh, discouraged is, sort of means don't give up. Don't lose heart. Don't faint. Uh, this is extremely relevant today. Like I said, when we go to pray, we're distracted. I am. There's a lot going on in my life, and my head gets crowded. I know it's empty, but still, I crowd a lot of thought in there at one time. And I know that y'all are any different. Uh, everything seems to sap our strength and focus, like uh, discouraging circumstances, physical weakness, unwanted interruptions, boring grease. Did I write that? And any one of those things can knock us out of commission, put us to the floor, and you know, keep us from getting back into the fight. And seen in this life, this prayer is something most of us desperately need every day, and that's spiritual strength. When we feel weak, prayer can be difficult. In those moments, there's this, this prayer that Doug read for us is very appropriate. It's a prayer to pray before you quit. If you're on the verge of giving up, drag this prayer out and and pray it. Don't throw in the towel. When you're weak, you need strength, right? And strength is the exact opposite of losing heart. To be strengthened with power means to be made powerfully strong so that you can overcome the obstacles set before you. When you're made strong in the inner man by the Holy Spirit, there will be power to keep going even when you'd rather quit. Note that this power is to the inner man. The inner man is the control room of everything that goes on in our heads and in our hearts. This is the place where we need help the most. And you know why? Because we're only human. Right? I've, that's, I've heard that a thousand times in my own head. You're only, remember, you're only human. Well, it's true. I am only human. And that's right. I'm not as good as I think I am. I'm not as smart. I'm not as strong. I'm not as wise or resilient or resourceful. I, I, I'm not. And guess what? Neither are you. <laughs> You're human too. Just like me. And that means we're all in the same boat together. All of us desperately in need of the Holy Spirit to strengthen us on the inside. And when we start looking at it like that, it's a little easier to get along with your fellow man out in the streets. Instead of throwing bombs at you. So for us, the prayer is not, Lord, take away my burdens, but Lord, Give me the strength and the strong shoulders to bear the burdens. It's a prayer for spiritual strength. Christ dwelling in our hearts is one result of strengthening on the other hand. The other result is that you'll have an always growing appreciation of the love of Christ. Paul is saying, I pray that you will come to know in a personal way this love that surpasses all understanding. No matter how far you go in your knowledge of Christ's love, you'll never find the end of it. Christ's love is broader than the universe, longer than time, higher than hope, and deeper than death. He's conquered all those things. And as we strengthen by the Spirit on the inside, we'll come to a new comprehension of His love for us. You take the tiniest atom, about the size of my brain, and you split it, and you, I mean, this is infinitesimally small, right? And you split it, and it releases this unbelievable, unhuman, calc calculable 
Uh, yeah. In other words, it, it releases power that's beyond our human understanding. Now, you take the simplest, smallest prayer offered in faith. That prayer will yield up that same kind of power. It'll be supernatural. Jesus said, have a little faith. So then, just on the basis of, of that, we should pray. And we should pray boldly. Not quietly, but with intensity. Just the way we want to live our lives. Pray boldly. Our prayers are too small. Pray big prayers to a big God. Open your mouth and I will fill it, says the Lord in the 81st Psalm. So consider God. And I'm big on ponder. Ponder God. Ponder anew the all, what the Almighty can do for you. God is able to do exceeding abundantly beyond all we can ask. The only way it's worth to pray. God wants us to pray. He invites us to pray. He waits for us to call upon Him. He is able to hear us and to answer us. And if we do our part, God shall not fail to do His part to strengthen us in the inner man, in the inward parts, and open our hearts to the love of Christ, which passes all understanding. And on this 16th Sunday in Trinity, a grateful congregation says, Amen. 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 Remember the words of our Lord Jesus, and He said, It is more blessed to give than to receive.